Hello there, it's been an exceptionally mild start to the week. In fact, parts of Western France on Tuesday uh, got very close to 30 degrees Celsius, about 21 in southeastern parts of the UK. And it's all because of this very warm and moist air coming up from the subtropics. This graphic here is showing the total column water, essentially the amount of water available in a column of air uh, above the ground. And you can see these really red colours here indicating some very high values. In fact, some parts of the UK are seeing the highest values you'll really get in the UK for the amount of moisture that's available uh, in the atmosphere at the moment. And so you can just follow it all the way up from the subtropics up towards the UK and affecting some other western parts of Europe as well. So very warm but also very moist air uh, over us at the moment. And it's all thanks to the jet stream, of course, this southwesterly jet drawing all of that warm air up on the forward side of this trough that's currently over the Atlantic and some fairly strong pieces of jet in here driving little areas of low pressure spinning them up uh, over the next few days. So running this sequence through this week you can see the jet remains quite active across southern parts of the UK for the next day or so. Then we get this plunge of northwesterly jet on Thursday so a colder direction by this stage. Ridge builds for the end of the week but it doesn't last very long though because the next piece of the uh, troughiness in the upper pattern starts swinging its way in off the Atlantic over the weekend. So it's very changeable, but also at the moment quite amplified, lots of north and south motion to that jet stream uh, at the moment. And that's, uh, that's what we call meridional. For next week, it looks much more zonal looking and we'll come a little bit more to that uh, in just a few minutes or so. But with that active jet stream, it can spin up small areas of low pressure as well. And this is just an idea of how things might look first thing on Wednesday morning. Now there are many computer models we look at, this is just one of them, and they all vary quite a bit in terms of where the showers are going to be on Wednesday. So there is some uncertainty about the specific placement of these showers on Wednesday morning. The general idea is though the heavy rain from the overnight clearing away, and then these little clusters of showers, they'll work their way from west to east across southern Britain on Wednesday morning. Now these could be very lively. There's a lot of jet stream activity. There's a lot of instability given how moist and warm the air is as well to create some fairly active showers, maybe some thunderstorms with some hail, some very gusty winds. And it wouldn't be surprising if one or two of these actually produced uh, brief isolated tornadoes as well. So there could well be a very locally some wind damage through the course of uh, Wednesday morning. But again, most places won't see that at all. So a very showery, unsettled sort of day in the south not quite so bad further north, although here comes the next front, the next cold front uh, approaching as the day goes on. So that's that first area of low pressure coming through during the morning with those squally showers. The next one here could spin up some more longer spells of rain, pushing into southern Britain on Wednesday evening and uh, Wednesday night. The exact northern edge of that, a little bit uncertain. Once that clears through, by Thursday we're left with a run of northerly winds coming right the way down from the Arctic. You can follow those isobars all the way up here. So much colder air feeding southwards, 20, 21 degrees on Tuesday. By Thursday, you'll be struggling to get to 11 or 12 across some southern parts of the UK. And there'll be plenty of showers running down these coasts, particularly the North Sea coast, but there'll also be others pushing into these western coasts uh, as well. So a very showery, cold, blustery sort of day. The other thing to bear in mind is this is a very long fetch of northerly winds down the North Sea. We're heading to spring tides as well. So the two combined could give some concerns of a little bit of minor coastal flooding along these North Sea coasts in particular on Thursday. Again, that's still a little bit uncertain at this early stage, but just something to bear in mind uh, a little bit nearer to time. Here's an idea of how strong the winds could be on Thursday then coming in from a northwesterly direction. So inland, we're looking at the greens to the blues here. So that's high 30s, low 40s, mile an hour gusts. This is the 24 hour maximum from the gusts expected during the day on Thursday up until Thursday night. But down the North Sea, we can see these gusts in excess of 50 miles an hour near the coast and especially offshore. So some fairly strong winds down the North Sea, also some other Western coasts as well on Thursday, a proper blustery and cold feeling day, especially in that wind. Now through the latter part of the week, we keep that northerly flow as we go into Friday, still some showers feeding in, maybe even some longer spells of rain into Scotland, which will break up into showers down the eastern side of the UK on Friday. But in general, high pressure is building in for a while. So I think late Friday and into the early part of Saturday, the showers will tend to die off. There'll be quite a bit of dry, settled weather for a time. It's a very transient ridge, as you saw in the jet stream pattern earlier, because already by the second half of Saturday, we're already seeing rain coming in, the winds have shifted back to a southwesterly, so a milder direction again, and it is going to turn unsettled again through Saturday. But again, that rain not reaching the far southeast till Saturday night or even into Sunday. But it is a gradual process, so we'll have high pressure around 
for a day, maybe two at the most. And then we'll get this uh, unsettled weather coming back again by the time we get through to uh, the end of Saturday and into Sunday. So quite a bit going on weather-wise this week. And if you're trying to get some stuff done in the fields, get some spraying done, that's going to be tricky with the winds, of course. And if you're trying to dodge the showers or some longer spells of rain, then uh, the best way to keep on track of all of that is to sign up to WQ Radar. There is a discount at the moment if you use the discount code HARVEST uh, when you sign up for your first year subscription. And plenty of information on here, five minute radar, weather observations, you can see what the wind speeds or the temperatures are like at the official weather stations near you. And you can also go back in the archive and look at some past events, get some lightning alerts as well if any of the showers are producing lightning uh, near you as well. So plenty of information on there. Uh, just head to wqradar.co.uk. So as we head through into next week, now we'll turn more on Saturday again, Sunday into Monday more widely by the looks of things. But for the bulk of next week, this is a typical sort of pattern expected with high pressure well down to the south here, across much of Europe and into the Azores. Low pressure up near Iceland, so fairly common really for this time of the year. So several lows tracking across to the north of Scotland. Between the two, the squeeze in the isobars, we're going to have quite a windy but westerly flow next week. So not the southerly, then northerly flow we've got this week, the meridional flow. This is a zonal flow right across the Atlantic, across the UK, and in fact beyond into Europe as well. And now there is going to be plenty of wet and windy weather at times next week, so it does stay quite unsettled, but there are hints that this high pressure will just keep a lot of the frontal activity a bit further north at times, and there is still a bit of uncertainty about how active the fronts will be further south. So depending on how things play out, uh, rainfall amounts may be closer to normal in the south and above average in the north, but if this whole pattern were to shift just a little bit further south, then that would put all of us basically in the same sort of weather, you know, unsettled, wet and windy through much of next week. Either way, it is going to be mild. It's a westerly direction, so temperatures will remain at or above average, uh, but we won't quite see the high temperatures we're seeing at the moment. Um, but equally, no real sort of cold weather showing up next week. It is uh, very much sort of Atlantic dominated with uh, plenty of uh, wind and rain. Towards next weekend, we start to see the high pressure weakening in the south and the lows start to slip a little bit further south uh, still. And so as we uh, turn the page and head into uh, the new month, 1st of November onwards, we start to see low pressure becoming much more dominant across uh, much of the UK, more sort of south shifted, these storm tracks. Uh, and so actually parts of northern Scotland could end up being drier than average because normally at this time of the year it's very unsettled. And if all of that sort of shifted a little bit further south, uh, then rainfall amounts may be just a little bit below average in northern Scotland, but elsewhere, much of Western Europe here, seeing above average rainfall uh, for the beginning of November. The driest conditions where the high pressure is down towards the, the southeast of Europe. And again, it's a westerly flow off the Atlantic, so for the most part, it is pretty mild across the board, as you can see here uh, for the beginning of November. Then there are signs heading towards mid-November uh, that the low pressure starts to weaken, the jet stream weakening a little bit as well, and we may see a little bit more in the way of higher pressure developing near the UK. Now, this doesn't mean it's going to be a big high sat over the UK. It just means the low pressures, which typically come at this time of the year, may be a bit weaker than normal. So some slightly longer, drier periods, not quite so much rain expected uh, as we head towards this middle part of November. It's still four weeks out, of course, so still subject to change, but this is how the trends are at the moment towards that drier process across western parts of Europe uh, with more in the way of higher pressure as we head towards mid-November. But in the meantime, it will turn briefly colder this week, especially sort of Thursday onwards really, but then becoming mild, wet and windy again as we go through the course of uh, the weekend and generally staying off, off and unsettled really over the next couple of weeks or so with some wind and rain, but especially in the north. And then towards mid-November, there may be a trend to something a little bit drier and more settled, some fog at night, maybe a little bit of frost depending on the wind direction as well. So um, unsettled for the next few weeks, but perhaps becoming a little bit more settled as we head towards mid-November. You can as ever keep up to date with those day-by-day -day forecasts on our social media and right now we're running a poll on our YouTube channel. We're interested to know in what sectors of agriculture you're involved in. Uh, so head on to our YouTube channel, just click on the community tab, you'll find the poll there or we have also got a link in the description down below. Thank you very much.